Welcome back. Let's continue talking about the host access table. In the previous recording, we discussed actually the first part of host access table, which was sender group. The idea with sender group is that when we have an incoming session, incoming mail session, we will assign actually the incoming connection to one of the sender groups, such as suspect list or blacklist. And depending what sender group you will be assigned to, you will have a treatment. That session will have, the TCP session will have a specific treatment. Block, accept, throttle. And that treatment that we give actually to an incoming SMTP session, that is being handled by your mail flow policy. So, we're continuing, you'll recognize the uh, email pipeline here. So we're moving on with the SMTP server. And in the SMTP server, we have seen that the moment we have, that was in a previous recording, that the moment we have an incoming TCP session and we see the SYN request arriving, the ESA will actually take that IP address and consult with Telos for the sender base reputation score. Now let's say the like we had in the previous recording as an example, let's say that the reputation score come back as minus 2.7. In that case, actually, we will apply, it will fall into a sender group called suspect list. And once you are part of the suspect list, we will need to apply some throttling to your connection. That would be actually the mail flow policy that would tell us what kind of throttling should we do with that mail session. So what we're going to talk about with the mail flow policy is part of connection control. Where would we go to adjust the mail flow policy? So again, part of, of the GUI, you'll go under the mail policy under mail flow policies. Let's have a look again at host access table because we discussed that. That's the same slide as we had in the previous recording. And I brought it back here to help us see what are we focusing on? So in part one, we discussed sender group. Now we're going to be talking, because we're doing part two, we'll talk about mail flow policy. And as I was explaining a few minutes ago, in part one, we have actually an incoming session, TCP request, on our port 25, on the listener. Listener looks at the incoming IP address, query, tell us, get assigned to a sender group. And why is it important to be assigned to a sender group? Is because that sender group will assign the sender group itself has a mail flow policy attached to it. And that mail flow policy will tell us how to deal with that particular incoming TCP request. So let's say we have two, uh, we have here our, on our ESA, we have actually two listeners. We have one incoming listener, that's more for the internet mail the mail arriving from the internet, and we have also an outbound mail listener, and that would be more to be able to relay email coming from our exchange box. On each of those listeners, we will have actually a hat. I mentioned that earlier that each listeners have their, each listener has its own hat. So in this case, my internet facing listener would have a hat and the hat would tell him maybe some IP address or domain name of our business partner. We saw that at the end of the previous recording. Um, blacklist. Well, the blacklist, we can get it actually from directly from Telos. If, 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 a, if, it, if the score, the reputation score is between minus 10 to minus 3, you will fall in the blacklist. Or you could go and assign a manual score if you want to. There's also suspect lists where we'll throttle, and I'll explain a little bit better what that is. And finally, the unknown list. Unknown list is someone who has a sender who has a score between minus 1 to plus 10. So when we look at it, it's not a known spammer, but it's an unknown list because we still need to actually look through that email uh, pass it through antivirus, pass it to dynamic spam. So it falls into the unknown list, meaning it's not one of our business partner that we have whitelisted. It's not someone we don't want to talk about that we manually blacklist. It's just unknown list. And on your, uh, on your 
a relay interface here, you will simply say that you're accepting traffic to send it to the internet, and under the relay list, you'll simply have the IP address of your mail server. So looking again at my hat overview, a refresher, same slide as we had in the previous recording, that we have our hat. We're looking right now at the public listener. Just by looking at that, I'm thinking that this guy is installed with only one listener. Look closely why I'm able to say that we have only one listener here. Well, if you have a public listener, but under that public listener, you happen to be mentioning that you are relaying traffic. That means that you're relaying traffic for maybe your exchange server, your inside mail server. That means that you have only one listener. You have one single listener on that ESA that is receiving mail from the internet, but also you have your exchange server sitting here, and your exchange server is also sending mail to that single listener. So, that's a very good telling sign, a sign that you have only one listener when your public listener happens to have relay actually listed there. All the other one, my whitelist, blacklist, suspect list, and unknown list, those are to service incoming uh, email arriving from the internet. Um, we always read, do you see the order here? So your hat is actually being processed top down. What happened if you come on the slider and let's say you, by accident, you create a gap. So let's say you go from minus 10 to minus 5 over here and therefore this portion would not be there. Well, when, uh, when a, a, an incoming session arrives with someone who has a score of minus 4, well, it is not being relayed because it's not my inside. Uh, it's not whitelisted, it's not blacklisted because he's got a score of minus 4. He would fall under your bottom. Okay, so that's why at the bottom we do have a catch-all at the bottom, but frankly, Nothing should really, really fall in your catch-all. When you think about it, let me clear my slide here so we can have a better view of this. But when you think about it, nothing should arrive in your catch-all. Anything should always be catched by blacklist, suspect list, or unknown list. With one exception. And I will mention it a little bit later on also, but it's possible that a sender just started connecting to the internet. So let's say there's a brand new IP address. It's not known by Talos. That sender would have actually what we call a no score. And in no score, in the past, a no score would actually fall under all. It's possible now, and I'll show you that a little bit later on, to go under your suspect list and say, hey, if someone has no score, treat them as suspect. Now, why are, we, why are we assigned a sender group? You're assigned a sender group because a sender group will point to a mail flow policy, and the mail flow policy will tell you how to deal with that connection. What I did on this slide, actually, is actually I regrouped the concept of the hat and the mail flow policy on one single table. So if you go under hat overview, you have information from here to over here. If you go under mail flow policy topic, you have information from here to over here. I wanted to show you in one single stop what would happen if someone with a score of minus 2.7, like we saw earlier, how would we deal with that? Well, if your score is minus dot, um, 2.7, let you were reading top down, so you're not a relay. We have not whitelisted. Your score is not blacklisted, so you would fall under suspect list. If you fall under suspect list, we will the mail flow policy assigned to you would be throttle. Let me go back one slide, okay? I want to show you this is what your hat overview looked like. Let's look again at my score minus 2.7. Minus 2.7, I fall over here, I will be assigned throttle. Okay, but what do you mean throttle? What is my mail flow policy? So let's go forward one slide. So if you are, if we're throttling, if your mail flow policy assigned is throttle, we will be accepting the three-way handshake. However, we will apply some restriction on the traffic. We will limit maybe the amount of how many emails can you connect, send per hour 
to my location, to my ESA, through the ESA. We will also check for anti-spam. We will also check for antiviruses. So what we saw over here is that the sender group, why, so an incoming session arrived, based on IP address, we will assign a sender group. The important portion of assigning a sender group is that the sender group will tell me my mail flow policy that is being used. And depending on the mail flow policy, we will then know what will be the connection behavior. Do I accept that three-way handshake or not? And then do I impose actually some restriction on the traffic? Now, it might be possible that you need to go and hit it the hat. Let's say an example I was mentioning previously that you have a business partner and you, can't, you need to always, always get email from that business partner. And that business partner, unfortunately, now has a bad reputation for whatever reason. So what we want to do is actually, because he's got a score of, let's say, minus four, so he's being blocked. Minus four, let's go back one slide. If you have a score of minus four, you dynamically fall under blacklist. Blacklist, we're blocking the connection. So, you know, we could come and move our slider to minus four, but so go in the suspect list to minus four, but wait, there's a bunch of spammers that we would start accepting their connection. So we don't want to move our sliders. We always want to leave the sliders where they are. So what we'll do instead, actually, is that we're gonna go and adjust our hat. In the hat, we notice that we have actually the white list. So why not go and take the IP address of my partner, or we could also use the, um, the, the domain of my partner or the host name of his sending MTA, and just add that to my whitelist. Also, what about my private listener? So if I have a private listener, so in this case, if I mention the private listener, that means that I'm on in a two listener scenario. Because if I, if I have a separate listener for handling traffic coming from my corporate mail server, that means I have two listeners. So in this particular um, example, we have actually a listener that is a private listener that we're calling outbound mail. And that outbound mail server needs to be told who is he accepting mail from. So I will need to come and click this, this blue relay list over here. That's a, actually a hyperlink. And we will come and we will add actually the IP address of the different corporate mail servers that we will be accepting email from. And not only are we accepting email, but we are relaying. It's more than accepting. We're accepting that email to relay it out to the internet. So thank you very much for listening to this recording where we discussed the second part of host access table. We talked about mail flow policy, how when an email three-way handshake arrive on your ESA, the ESA will do a query to tell us to find out what is the, um, the sender base reputation score of it. We will assign, actually, based on that IP address, one of the sender group. But the big reason why we are assigning a sender group is that we can match it to a mail flow policy. And the mail flow policy will tell us, regarding that TCP session, if we accept it, if we block it, if we throttle it, or if we relay that connection if it's coming from our inside corporate mail server. Thank you very much for listening.